on this Christmas 2019 Star Wars weekend. I want to wish you Muscle Serpents Daily fans the advantage to come into my snake collection and see the dark side of the snake world that is balanced with a little bit of light. We call it the Pied. The Pied Snake is incredible. And I will show you various incarnations of the Pied in balls and bowers and Burmese pythons. You will see the true power of the Pied. All right, let's start out with the uh, Pied Ball Python. Here is an adult Pied. So, you know, this is, this is pretty much the colors you're gonna see at adulthood. They're a little more vibrant as in all ball pythons when they're younger, but you can see it's patterned, broken up by white bands, okay? It's like lack of anything that happens here. There's no pattern, there's no color. And that's typical of pied animals in every part of the animal kingdom. They're lacking sections, okay? And this happens because developmentally, when the embryo is developing, um, some of the pigment cells don't migrate properly and you get breaks in the, in the in the pattern distribution and the color distribution and you create this pied animal so here's a pied ball pipe and this started back pete call was the first person to really breed these pieds and make them popular and when they first were selling they were selling for like 25 grand a piece and you know that started you know the whole ball python craze or part of the ball python craze for sure um, so there's your pied ball python which are really pretty amazing and that pied has developed into some insane, insane looking morphs that incorporate the pied into them. In a relatively short period of time, we went from that regular pie bald python to something like this that I produced this year, which is a leopard banana anchi orange dream pied. It's also 50% head hypo and head albino. So, I mean, look at this. This is just the insanity in, in such a short period of time that we've created. And once again, it's that the breaking up of the pattern and color that just makes this animal so exquisite and makes the pie so desirable in all the snake world, you know, in all the different morphs that it comes, I mean, in all different uh, species it comes in. Look at this animal. Actually, someone purchased this animal from the last video I did, and they got a really good, nice holiday deal from me. And this will be going to its new home probably next week. So this little boy is gonna be some powerhouse in his collection, let me tell you. Here is a super pastel, super panther pied. The panther gene coming from the Netherlands, from Freak Nuts collection. I've showed this little girl off before. She's growing really nicely. And that super panther, super pastel with the pied I mean, you see the rust, it looks like rust, but it's surrounded by like some crazy outlining. This is just, look at this pied. I mean, who would have thought? Look at the, and it's the contrast of this tremendous pattern. So if this whole snake was just this, it would look cool, but it wouldn't look that cool. It's the breaking up of it. It looks like someone actually cut it out with a scissor, this pattern, and peppered in that white. And then look at that head. The shape of the, um, the way it little pinches off here pattern, the striping on the face. That's just an exquisite looking animal. And once again, this just shows you the power of pied, you know, the stuff that you can do with pied. Even just the fact that you have that little white tip tail there. I mean, that's just kind of cool, right? I mean, it's just, it's just the accenting of what pied does to a regular looking snake, or even a snake that is a multi-gene snake in this sense. And of course, one of my favorite pieds of all time, and I'm so lucky and blessed to have produced two of them this year. Unfortunately, they're both females, but I'll take them. Um, the panda pied. That's the super black pastel pied. It looks like a panda bear. It's got the black head. Let's see if we can come out here a little bit. The black head, offset with the white body. This one has pretty much two, two blotches. It's pretty much completely white. She's going to go and shed here, so she's not quite as sharp as she normally is, but you can just see 
once again, if this was just an all-black snake or an all-white snake, nothing. You would say, ah, cool. Certainly would be cool, right? I mean, but once you put the patterning in there with that white, it would be nice if there would be one more little black blotch right here. That would be perfection, and we can work on that over the next uh, couple years. I think the key would be to put Enchi in this. If you can get Enchi or Super Enchi, Super Black Pastel Pied, because Enchi brings more pattern back into the pied, I think that would solve the problem of not, not enough splotches. Ironically, the Super Black Pastel Het Pied actually looks like a, a Panda Pied. A lot of times you get like a, 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 you know, a striping of white in that whole Super Black pattern. Um, but this is the Panda Pied, uh, the pinnacle of pieds in my estimation right now. And here is the albino pied, which is another one of my really big favorites. Almost forgot. Here's the, the daddy to this little boy that I produced this past year and got really lucky. If you remember, the mama died in, in childbirth. Um, but we got a, a visual albino pied out of it. Here's the daddy. Once again, look at that albino pattern set off by the pied. Albino is cool enough. You put white splotches in there, and wow. This is one of the nicest of all the animal, of all the snakes that there's retic, you know, uh, albino pieds, there's berm albino pieds. I think the uh, ball python albino pied is the nicest looking one. Just, and especially these two have really good balance. The, you see how the dad has really good balance in white to, to pattern? And the son has the same thing. They're very well balanced. Sometimes you get a lot of white, or sometimes you get only a little bit of white. They're called high white or low white pieds. These are like perfectly 50-50 balanced, and that's what we're always looking for because it just looks exquisite. And once again, this little boy is actually going to be for sale. I haven't put him up yet, but if anyone's interested, you can contact me, give you a good Christmas deal. Get me before the end of the new year. I'm in a good mood. Ho, ho, ho. I got my Santa Claus uh, spirit going here. All right, and here is one of my favorite new pieds to really hit the market, at least here in the U.S., is the Burmese Pied. That's right, that's a Burmese Python that's a pied. You can see the white offset. Now, the, the Burms Pieds tend to have more white on their bottoms that kind of roll up into their tops rather than the ball pythons, the way they break up the, uh, the pieds. This is like kind of like more like a retic pied. And this little boy is growing really nicely. He will be part of a, my breeding program. I'm gonna be really trying to produce some nice looking pied berms. I love berms and this guy is exquisite. And he's gonna be the cornerstone of this, the pied berm breeding project. And as you can tell, he calmed down a lot since I got him. He was a really, you know, really jumpy when I first got him and I've been handling him. You can see, look at all that white underneath his belly. I mean, that's just gorgeous. This guy is a little, once again, the berms are not gonna kind of stay still like the ball pythons do, because ball pythons don't do much of anything, but you can get the idea that hides just add another dimension to snakes because of the coloration and the changes and the way it breaks up pattern. And I can only imagine what a champagne pied berm might look like, or a even a green pied. It's kind of like solid, you know, the, the green is the patternless, you know, berm. There's just so many different variations that we can get involved with here. And it's going to look great. I can't wait to get this into many different morphs. And the berm pied is, is like I said, it's, it's just starting out really. There's not much that has been done with it. They have an albino pied version of the berm. And to me, it's cool. And I'm definitely going to try to make it. Don't get me wrong. It's not as cool as the, as the, Ball python albino pied, but I think there's a lot of potential here for sure. Let's say hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, guys, that's it on this Christmas 2019. I hope you guys liked the little explanation and show off of the power of the pied. Now, one snake I didn't necessarily, I don't have in my collection yet, is I don't have a visual pied bow. They do exist. And I promise you at some point in the future, I will produce pied bows and that is my vision. But it is out there and I have had the opportunity to film a pied boa and hold it in my hands. So I'm gonna just show you a little bit about it. You know, it was found in Mexico 
it's a it's you know boas are broken into you know boa constrictor boa imperator which is most of the boas that we see and then there's boa sigma and this seems this pied boa seems to be boa sigma and it it, it kind of resembles a leopard boa a little bit but as you look at it, I mean, it, it's kind of similar to the berm pie, right? Because it has like that, the white along the belly, and then it kind of just loops up a little bit. But there's so much potential. Think about boas. They're so red. Imagine a, almost like a solid red snake broken up with those white. It will be just incredible looking. It'll be like a red panda, you know, <laughs> pie. There's so much potential in the boa, you know, morphs to get hide into it and do so many amazing things that I mean it, the only limitation is really imagination so pine is power uh, and we're going to be producing some great stuff here I have a lot of good visions and I know a lot of there's so many amazing breeders out there that have done such crazy things I got to tell you I'm on Instagram I, I go on Facebook I, I go on YouTube I watch everyone's videos and I'm just like Oh man, there's always someone that inspires me. It's it's like it's not even a jealousy thing. It's like a it's like I want to emulate that. I want to do this what this guy is doing. And I'm sure people watch some of my stuff and maybe say the same thing. So the collaborations and the great thing about snake breeding is that we all sell our we sell our competition all the stuff we produced. So because we got to pay the bills, right? And uh, so we all eventually get each other's stuff, and then we get to incorporate it. It's like, you know, people who collaborate on trying to cure, you know, diseases. You know, when you collaborate, you produce things a lot faster and a lot better. So I hope you guys are having a very peaceful Christmas 2019 from me here, Dave Palumbo, at Muscle Serpents Daily. I want to wish you all a very happy Christmas, and hopefully you guys are going to rest today and as I say, rest and recharge because we got to build it up for next week because after New Year's, it's 2020, a new decade, and a lot of new things on the horizon. All right, make sure you guys subscribe, hit that like button, and turn on your notifications. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.